Singers, welcome to the first installment of Moving Prescott Chorale Forward. Before we get started, I want to welcome three other groups to this recording. They are the Prescott United Methodist Church, Jacob Gilbert, Director. Jacob is also doing the filming today. The second is St. Catherine Labore Catholic Church in Chino Valley with Therese Holliday as director and St. Luke's Episcopal Church with Kay and myself as directors. The current situation has caused all of us a lot of stress and distress, physically, personally, perhaps fiscally, emotionally. I don't ever remember a period in my professional career that I have had to go this long without making music, singing, teaching, conducting, preparing, doing whatever it is. It has left a void in all of us. I know I had a personal out, and that personal out was we're remodeling this new home and a yard, and I had lots to keep me busy, but I always had that nagging part of me that no music creativity was happened. So, several months ago, the section leaders and Sandy Studi, board president, and Kay all met and made some decisions. The decision came on their recommendation that we not try and reconvene in January as scheduled. It's simply the wrong time. As much as I didn't like that decision, it is the correct decision. So we decided, how can we keep the singers engaged? How can we keep the community engaged with the chorale? So we created these seven singer sessions under the direction and with the section leaders, with their suggestions, and with Gilbert, uh, Jacob Gilbert helping us as well. We felt it was the best way to get us close to back to what, where we ended up in March. So we created these sections. Certainly, the virtual recording was a good way to get started again. And I can tell you from personal experience that those recordings are difficult, number one, to do, and number two, to listen to. I had many comments from many of you that said, if I thought I was that bad, I would never be in the corral. Folks, I felt the same way. I've been singing for a number of years, and I listened and I said, my goodness, how do you consider yourself to be a professional? Fortunately, Jacob can do a lot with editing to make that recording, but the virtual choir got us started. And I want to thank those people who helped us get to this point. And you all went to the painful extra mile. Now, for the first segment of today's session, it is breath control, posture, relaxation, and breathing vowel colors. Let's start with breath control. There are so many ways to demonstrate breath control, so many ways to describe breath control. And I'm going to attempt in this short period of time to give you some basics. But please understand, if you are studying voice, you have studied voice before, I'm going to do everything I can to support what your teachers are teaching you. I'm going to give you some fundamentals. For some of you, you will turn off the video and say, I already knew all of that. For some of the singers who have not had that much experience, hopefully some of this information will be helpful to you. My theory is I can learn something from nearly everyone. So hopefully we can present some concepts for you to be able to move yourself forward. So let's get started. On the basic level, inspiration is the act of taking in breath. And it can be done two ways. It can be done with the nose, or the mouth, or the best combination for the singer from my view is nose and mouth both because it fills the lungs more quickly and more fully. So now I have these two lungs full of breath. I want you who are watching. I can't see you. You can only see me. I can't hear you. Let's take in a full breath using nose and mouth both and Now we have these lungs filled with breath. Please understand that the lungs are simply sacs and they hold the air. 
Here's what I want you to do. If you have a friend at home that can help you, when you take in this full breath of air, I want them to put their hands on your back, lower, below the rib cage, thumbs pointing in, and have them feel the expansion when you take a full singer breath that happens in the back. I have now expanded my rib cage. Let's talk about the rib cage. The hinge or the sternum is the hinge to the rib cage. The rib cage floats in the back for a very specific reason, so that the lungs can expand. When somebody is touching you in the back and they feel that expansion, you have taken a full breath. And that's the key to singing, having that full breath so you have that foundation underneath you. Let's take one more quick breath and then we're gonna talk about the next step. Ready? Breath in, nose and mouth. Now you're holding this breath and you don't know what to do with it. So what do we do? We have to have some support underneath it, which leads us to the next segment, and that is the diaphragm. The diaphragm, folks, is an involuntary muscle that is dome-shaped. It is connected right below the breastplate in an area that I call the epigastrium, right below the sternum here. And it floats and goes back to the bottom of your rib cage in the back. It is a thick muscle that moves involuntarily. When you breathe in, the diaphragm moves down. It just does it automatically. So how do you support that and what do you do next? The diaphragm, as I said, is involuntary. So you breathe in, my diaphragm has moved down, I'm trying to talk without any support whatsoever, so how am I going to support it? So next, folks, comes the support. Here's another component to breathing and supporting. What is support? First and foremost, breath support is not a violent action. Let's go back to when we were five or six years old on the elementary school playground. And the school bully came up to you and said, I'm going to sock you in the stomach and pulls back as if he or she were going to do that. What's your natural reaction is <gasps> you take in this huge breath and you prepare for the hit. That is a violent, that is a very aggressive action. That's not what breath support is. Breath support, folks, is a very gentle lift. A lift that allows the diaphragm some support. Remember, we take in the breath, we try and talk, there's no support. That's where the diaphragm needs help. And we get that from what I call the girdle of muscle or the abdominal area. Just envision that the diaphragm becomes, I'm going to use a sports metaphor, the line of scrimmage where the offense and the defense meet. If you will, on this side of the line is the lungs. This side of the line is the support. They meet at the diaphragm. You are pulling up that support generally to support the lungs on the top. What happens then is the diaphragm gently moves up. The air is passed out of the lungs to the larynx, forming the vowel and singing and doing what you need to do to produce the sound. So those are the fundamentals, the breath in the lungs, the diaphragm and the support, and then the support coming up underneath it. I'm going to use a book to give you what I consider, I hope, is a clear illustration of how the support works. The book's not important, but what the book illustrates is important, and that is how I give support. Many voice teachers teach support totally differently. Find the one that's best for you, and then use it. Here goes the support. Now watch what happens. When I take a breath in, the top of the book will come out, away from my anatomy. When I take the breath and start using it, the support moves up underneath. I'm going to turn to the side and take a breath in. Now, gently, the bottom of the book moves in as my abdominal support moves up underneath the diaphragm. It's a gentle action. 
It's not a violent reaction. You have to practice support which is best for you. Listen to your voice teacher. Listen to what works for you. Sing with a friend. Ask them, how does support work for you? How does it work best for you? Folks, you know many singers who have what I call natural hookup that looks effortless. They just sing. They sit beside you in church. They sit beside you in the corral. And you say, how in the world do they do that? It looks like it's effortless. Let me tell you, they work just as hard at producing support as you and I do in our rehearsals. So we've covered now the lungs, we've covered the diaphragm, we've covered support. It's up to you to find the good place where that can happen for you on a natural way. Now let's talk about some more fundamentals. They are posture. I'm looking down at my feet. I have a spread on my feet of about this far. And when I'm standing, I want to make sure I'm solid. Do this and ask a friend to come up. Take one finger and press you on the shoulder. If you can be moved in your posture, you probably need to adjust your feet a little bit. Folks, that is the foundation to everything you're going to do. Keeping the feet so close together does not give the body the support and the structure that it needs. So make sure the stance is wide enough so it's comfortable and natural. Now, singing. Everything is allowed to work right exactly like it is supposed to do. I'm going to cut now and go over to a chair because I want to show you what I think is the proper support in singing when you are seated. Now, let's talk about seating posture. Number one, when you are seated, you have to be forward on the chair. Why? Because then the pelvis can rock back and forth. Why would you want to do that? Because when the pelvis is rocked back, the diaphragm is suppressed. The support cannot come up easily underneath the diaphragm. So just a simple, simple maneuver of moving sitting forward and rocking forward. That allows the pelvis to sit forward. It allows the support to come up underneath the diaphragm. And the other component is the feet. The same stance is used with your feet when you are seated as it is when you are standing. Many times in rehearsal, church, corral, solo, small group, it does not matter. So folks, what happens now is when you are prepared to stand and you are seated, and I'm not gonna have Jacob move the camera, but folks, the, the movement to standing from sitting is very simple. You simply stand and the posture is there. But, to go back down, if you are seated this way, everything is compacted together and it cannot work properly. So again, the proper posture is forward, pelvis rock forward. Now, everything can work and you can be seated. I'm going to cut now and we're going to move the camera again to go back and finish this section and this session about support and singing. Thanks, let's get back to the session now. I wanna talk now about how nature teaches us many things. And you're thinking, wait a minute, how can nature teach us about singing? It's simple. We've talked about breath, moving the diaphragm, moving the abdominal mass. I wanna give you two illustrations how in nature you can understand this better. Imagine that you have a small infant and it's the summer. The infant is sleeping dressed in a little t-shirt and a diaper. I want you to watch the inhalation process of that baby as it sleeps. The breath comes in, the abdomen moves, it moves forward, the baby exhales, and they do it all day, breathing in, breathing out. Now add the component of crying. They all do it, and they can do it all day long, especially when they don't feel well. Ask yourself the question, how can they cry all day long 
and not experience vocal fatigue? The answer is simple. They don't know how to do it incorrectly. They are not encumbered with vowels and a conductor and notes and rhythm. They just breathe and they react to their environment. So look at a baby when it sleeps. The other illustration comes when we used to live in Williamson Valley, and that is we had boxers. They are a perfect illustration of how the anatomy of singing works. A dog has a horizontal anatomy. We have a vertical anatomy. You ever watch a dog bark? It works this way. The abdomen moves forward when the dog barks into the diaphragm. The diaphragm exerts a little pressure on the lungs. The lungs move the air up to the larynx and the dog barks. And they bark. And they bark. Or the cat meows or the cow bellows all day long. Why can they do it without getting hoarse? Because they don't know how to do it incorrectly. Again, they're not encumbered with vowels and all the mechanical stuff to get in the way of the process. So watch a dog bark. You will be amazed to see this abdominal mass move against the diaphragm. The same mechanics that we have this way, they have this way. But it's the same process. So nature teaches us so many things. Here at home, we have this wonderful little beagle named Casey. Casey can bark so loud, so long, all day and never get hoarse. I understand how she can do it, but it's a marvel still to watch it. So watch what nature can do for you. Now, let's take what nature has taught us and apply it again to the principles we're talking about. And I'm going to have to read part of this. We use the book as an illustration how the support happens. And Jacob and I were just talking about voice teachers and how they teach support. So much of it is they can give you a basic instruction, but then it's up to you to find your comfort level and find how support works for you best. I'm going to say something personal. It is sometimes embarrassing or you make yourself a little bit timid when you think about, boy, I have to manipulate my, my body to be able to support. It's a personal thing. You don't have to do that. Find the best and most comfortable way for you to do that. Next part of the session is relaxation. Let's talk about tension. Tension in singing is a very important factor, and I'm going to read this part. The area around the larynx is filled with muscles and with all kinds of cartilage. The technical terms are cricoretinoid, retinoid cartilages, but they all surround this little tiny larynx. And all of them contribute to vocal fatigue when they are not properly supported when you sing. The larynx is where fatigue occurs. The muscles fatigue, the larynx fatigues, and it generally it's due to a lack of support or tension. Why does this happen? Because the breath support is not 100% correct. When it does happen, stop singing. Roll the neck, the head, the shoulders, and most importantly, make sure the jaw. There is no tension in the jaw. When you've taken care of all of that, swallow again, because the larynx will rise and it'll moisten itself. A general principle. Most singing occurs when the larynx is in a down and relaxed position. It has to rise sometimes due to pitch, but making sure that there's no tension in the neck, the shoulders and the head, and in the jaw, those are principles that you alone have to work at. Now, how do we do that? When we get in trouble, it's because of vowels. That's my opinion and vowel colors. In order for a group to sing together, all of the vowels need to be unified. They have to be pronounced the same way or the blend does not occur. To convey text, and I'm going to read this again, the vowel has to be as pure as possible and the consonants have to be articulated. Remember that the vowel is the basis for the word and the consonant is merely a way to get from one word to the next. 
I'm going to give you a phrase that I want us to use for the next couple of minutes. The phrase is, it is a long way home. It is a long way home. The word I want to emphasize is the word long, L-O-N-G. You have an O in there. Listen to the way it's pronounced, because that O, all of a sudden, becomes an A. It is a law, a, 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 a pure A vowel, way home. Listen to the end of the end of the word long. It is a long way home. That consonant and the consonant that precedes it are this long. The vowel is this long. The vowel moves you forward, so it has to be pure. How do we do that? Here is probably the most confusing of phrase that I use for singers, because I've been told, I don't understand what you mean when you say, breathe the color of the vowel. Even Jacob said to me, some of the singers don't understand that. Let me see if I can help with that right now. When you breathe in the air, you're getting ready to sing. Generally, when you're getting ready to sing, there's a word involved. Identify the word, Identify the vowel color that you need to produce that word. The word we're going to use now is long. So to form that word properly, it is a... The tongue goes to the roof of the mouth to produce the L, then it goes immediately to the vowel. It is a long... There's the pure A. Ah, way home. It is a long way home. Vowel is this long, the consonants are this long. So if that vowel needs that much attention, you have to prepare as you look at the word. So you're looking at the music. You see the next word coming up. You have to take a breath. So you say to yourself mechanically, what is the vowel? I'm going to prepare that vowel as I breathe in the breath to support that vowel sound. Folks, that's called vowel modification. And that is how we achieve blend in a group. Again, quartet, duet, chorale, church choir, it doesn't matter. The principle is always the same. That you have to prepare that vowel by breathing it as you get ready to sing. With me, I want you to say the phrase, it is a long way home. And we're going to elongate the word long. Here we go. It is a long way home. Now breathe and say only the word long and prepare it. The tongue clicks off the roof of the mouth, you go to the ah. Long way home. Say it with me one last time. Long way home. I hope that in this short discussion that's helped clarify breathing the color of the vowel. Maybe I should say preparing the vowel for uh, diction to go out to the singers. So folks, that is, I hope, an explanation that'll help. Here's the crux of this entire videotape for today. To sing, you must breathe, and I'm gonna read these. To unify the sound of multiple singers in a group, all the vowels must be the same. To maintain relaxation of the jaw, the neck, and the shoulders, breathe that vowel color in before you say it, making sure there is no tension in the neck, the head, the shoulders, and the jaw. Remember that the larynx fatigues. When it does, stop and go back. Swallow. Let the larynx rise. It will re-lubricate itself when you do that. If it doesn't happen the first time, do it again. Make sure there's no tension. This all sounds so easy. It's not. It takes lots of practice. You have to do that practice on your own. Hopefully, this videotape will allow you to come back and review it again and practice some of the things that we have talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only a beginning. I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully, it has been successful. If you want to send a question, send it to me at Prescott Corral at Reagan, R-E-A-G-A-N.com. I will answer every single question 
And if we need to, we'll have a phone conversation. Hopefully this will help. Next week, the session, which is going to be conducted by Jacob, is ear training, tuning the ear, and listening skills. Folks, Jacob knows exactly what he's doing. He has learned so much since he's come here. He brought his college education here, and he's helping every single one of us. So again, next Tuesday, November 17th at 6.30, we will give you the YouTube channel so you can watch it as many times as needed. Blessings to your family. Take good care and sing well.